I basically took like a day off YouTube and you know the Giants media and content uh, after our season came to an end on Saturday night and I'm not really sure what this bit is gonna be in terms of me expressing my thoughts you know I kind of want to focus on the game a little bit but at the same time I want to focus on the season as a whole and then there's other news that came out today of course we had Joe Shane's press conference but I'll say this right away for those of you that are coming to see my thoughts on you know the end of the season pressers I would say revisit the channel tomorrow night during the Just Chillin' podcast where you will have a chance to call in and give your thoughts and we can have a little conversation on it as well because that's what the topic of tomorrow night's podcast is going to be. I'm going to try and focus a little bit more on sort of the conclusion of the season here. You know, there was uh, some crazy rumors out today, Um, you know, by an account that doesn't have the best reputation in terms of being accurate. You know, the NFL rumors Twitter account saying that Saquon turned down a $12 million contract, which, like I said, it doesn't have the best reputation, but, you know, that's out there now. So it is what it is with that. But let me start off first with the season. The New York Giants entered the season under a brand new regime, brand new head coach, brand new general manager, with relatively low expectations because we were a team that won only four games previously. And with the exception of A, a new draft class, and B, some very, very small free agent signings, this was essentially the same team. And we're talking a difference of maybe 10 players in total here, with majority of those players being completely new to the, the NFL style of football as they were rookies. But even with that, Joe Shane managed to get a really good draft class in order. He managed to get absolutely stellar free agents, probably the best free agent class we've seen in a while when you consider the value of them, you know, price of performance. And Brian Dayball is a first year head coach, along with the coaching staff he assembled in Wink Martindale, the defensive coordinator, and Mike Kafka, the offensive coordinator, managed to maximize the talent on this roster and proven just one NFL season something that's been known for a while now but you know reinforces just how much coaching matters to a team how much getting the right coach matters to a team and to an extent how much getting an elite coach and an elite coaching staff can get your team farther than possibly elite personnel because this team that was just a four-win team last year. This team that entered the season with like an over-under win, around six wins or seven wins, end up winning nine. Um, If they didn't get injured in the second half of the season, probably could have won 10 or 11, made it into the playoffs, and won a playoff game. Took them so much farther than any Giants fan really could have, you know, realistically expected. And it, it's incredible. It's, it's a breath of fresh air, but it's just... I don't want to understate the job that this new front office and this new coaching staff did. I have to give so much applause to them, man. I absolutely love the direction the franchise is going, especially after like four or five years of bad football, bad coaching. And it seemed like the Giants were just stalling out at a four or five win team. I am extremely happy. And I, I don't think any Giants fan should be angry with the way that the season went. I'm going to get into how the season ended, but with the way the season went, Mike Kafka showed that he can grow as a play caller, at least once again during the regular season from game one to game 17, two completely different offenses. Wink Martindale showed that he can get the most out of his talent, but there's still some flaws there where we need to fill in personnel. And same thing for the offensive side of the football, by the way. But for the most part, over the course of the season, this defense definitely overperformed i'd say and once again i gave the props to brian dayball and i definitely have to give the props to the guys on the field that are actually doing the work daniel jones had his best season in the nfl in the pros as a new york giant without a doubt he has earned a contract extension and we'll see what that extension is with what the front office does in these next coming weeks or probably next coming months saquon barkley definitely made a strong case and it's somebody that i want to resign um it's not really a consensus amongst giants fans i think he earned an extension but it has to be a smart one in terms of money if he actually turned down a 12 million dollar deal a year i don't know if we could afford to bring him back when you know it is a fact at this point you could always you could always find really good to elite running backs in the draft every year it's just 
a position like that. I'm not going to say the running back position doesn't matter because it does. But you can find talented people at the position for, you know, basically a very, very cheap contract. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau had a great rookie year. If this man wasn't being held every single game and the refs actually recognize that he's being held, I think that he would have finished with a lot more in the statistical categories of things. But he had a pretty good rookie year. Dexter Lawrence absolutely broke out, looking like the best interior defensive lineman in the NFL. Adoree Jackson, I feel like, backed up what he showed us last year, which is that he is better than a number two corner. He can be a number one corner in the league. And when he came back, we saw that, especially against the Vikings in the wild card round. You know, there's there's praise to go around to everybody. Andrew Thomas was an all-pro. You guys know I'm a huge Andrew Thomas fan. Love to see that he finally got national recognition. Evan Neal struggled a bit, and there's a lot of Giants fans hating on Evan Neal. And I want to say, guys, take a step back, take a breath. I know a lot of you were saying, oh, we can't compare this to Thomas's rookie year because at least Thomas improved over the course of the season. And I'll say Evan Neal improved over the course of the season. It wasn't until that late season injury that he took a step back. And once again, it was because of late season injury. And guys, hindsight is really 2020 because you guys are forgetting how much the Giants fan base hated Andrew Thomas's rookie year, which was a stupid thing, by the way, even though he improved over the course of the season. Like, you don't remember it because we're two years removed from it. Either way, without using the Andrew Thomas comparison, Neil is a rookie. He's going to get better in his second year. I guarantee it he's going to get better in his second year. You don't dominate at the SEC level like he did. And then come into the NFL and all of a sudden are bad. Like, we'll say one thing. One coach I can't, I'm kind of looking sideways at, I'm not fully convinced by, is our offensive line coach, unfortunately. And this goes back all the way to when we hired him, when I was like, I'm not sure how good of an offensive line coach he is. Keep that in mind as well. Like, Thomas had a bad rookie year, partly because of injury, similar to Neil. Partly because he had to adjust, similar to Neil. And partly because we didn't really have good offensive line coaching. And, you know, I don't want to rag too much on Bobby Johnson, but I feel like his position group was the only one that did less with more. Like, if you look at it on paper, we have a sterile left tackle. We have somebody that's supposed to be a really good right tackle. We have our right guard that underperformed tremendously compared to his previous years. A left guard was definitely a question mark. And center was like average, a little bit below average, above average in the run game. Overall, that's like an average-ish offensive line, and I think we underperformed. A bit but like i said i'm not gonna get too much into that overall i love the season by the giants and i think with some key moves oh my mic is falling <laughs> with some key moves we will be back and we will be back stronger I, i've already said several times in different videos that i think we can win with daniel jones and i think he is going to be back at the very least for the next two years so if we do that we need to first and foremost figure out what's going on with the o-line whether it's johnson or what or whether it's we need an legit actual center out of college or if you want to tackle the guard position interior o-line is something the giants need to look at and then immediately you need to get daniel jones some better weapons if you looked at basically not only wild card weekend which we ended up winning in but the division round as well you look at the weapons these quarterbacks have and you're like there's only so far that coaching can carry you you need to get some more talent in there you need to get somebody that is a game breaker almost in there and this draft has a couple of guys that, you know, potentially could be that. So you need to address the wide receiver position and immediately going on to the defensive side. I think cornerback and inside linebacker are the most important things. Maybe I should have said inside linebacker first because we are really, really thin at that position. We have guys that are honestly, you know, I should say backups. I don't want to insult any of these NFL players because at the end of the day, they are NFL players. But we don't we don't really have a starting call caliber interior linebacker and we'll see how Darren Beavers does when he returns from injury um now to quickly address how the season ended I hated the way it ended I the reason I didn't make any video yesterday was because of how angry I was with how the season ended we played the Philadelphia Eagles in the divisional round and we got smoked we got embarrassed we got absolutely outclassed and I'll say this I recognize and 100% a lot of this is because of the fact that the Eagles are just so much more talented than we are. They're so much more stacked than basically every position that we are. They're one of the best teams in the NFL. And there goes my mic. Personnel-wise, compared to us, who once again overperformed. So I recognize that. But that doesn't take away from the fact that I saw things during the game that should have went better. Daniel could have performed better. I don't know if, if it was the um, 
the defensive line and the Eagles or whatnot, but there was a couple throws he missed. And I'm already going to get tons of hate in the comments just for saying that because I feel like you can't criticize the guy. But he's not the only reason we lost. It was a complete team loss. Let me get into it. The offensive line looked really bad. Uh, we underutilized Saquon way too much. He was getting good runs against them. And the, the only bad part of the Eagles defense was their rushing defense. I don't get why we didn't run Saquon more. Should have ran him more. My Kafka play calling was a bit iffy for me, of course. You know, wide receivers weren't playing up to par as well compared to the were compared to the way they were the week before. And Wink Martindale couldn't adjust for anything. And, and that is an extremely dif uh, difficult offense to adjust for. But he seemed like he couldn't adjust for anything. So while not only did we get, you know, just outmatched in terms of talent and players came up short, I also feel like the coaches came up a little bit short. And that's why I was so angry because... The Philadelphia Eagles are probably the team I hate the most in the NFL. And I never want to go out like that against them again. And I don't think, you know, if we sure up a couple holes on this team, that we will go out like that against them again. I think the Giants are back. I think we're here to stay. And I'm really excited for the future. Put your thoughts down below, guys. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe. And I am out. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.